So in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how when you take a Photoshop document and drop it into another document, it'll actually create a smart object. Now, you have probably taken documents straight from uh, you know, the documents folder into Photoshop by dragging it in. Now, if you drag it up above here in the gray area, you can open that document up. So that's a way to quickly open a document. And if there's nothing else open and we drag it in the middle, it'll just open up inside Photoshop. But when there's something that is open and you drag a document in, it's going to place it as a smart object onto that document. So you see, now I uh, click enter. You'll notice that there was that X in the middle of it. Here is uh, my document here. This is a little text document basking in the sun. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these so I don't have them showing. And I'm going to put uh, this one over here, like so. And so now I have this basking layer. And you can see, you know, this is working OK, but there's something wrong. I need to do some things to it. Now, there are all sorts of things you can do to it. For example, uh, masks can still be used on a smart object. So if you wanted to erase something, you could just add a mask, go to your brush, and it will mask away. I'm going to step backward. Uh, you can add filters. For example, I can go to effects and do an outer glow. And you can make that outer glow go around it if you want. So you can do uh, effects and filters that are um, compatible with a smart object. Some filters are special for a smart object. For example, under filters, and I go to blur, if I do a, let's say, Gaussian blur. This Gaussian blur is kind of neat in that you know how normally you blur something when you're done blurring it you can't work with it anymore. You can't change it. Hey, you've, you've blurred it, you're done. You have to step backward. Well, certain filters are actually called smart filters and smart filters you can work with. For example, I can go in here and change this Gaussian blur by double clicking it. I can make it mega blurry or less blurry and it'll show me the results. I can turn it off and on. So it's really easy to see what it would look like. Now, um, the filters that are smart filters aren't always obvious. So just if you can try to do one, usually you can do it, but there'll be some that you won't be able to do inside here whenever you're dealing with a uh, smart object. Now, there is some issues with this uh, basking in the sun image. If you take a look at it, um, well, it's just, it's it's not the right colors for this background, right? I need to do something to make some color contrast happen. Um, it's a little small, okay? When I enlarge it, once you see what happens, I'm going to enlarge it. Um, and it'll always tell you that it'll do the smart filters after you do something. So, for example, right now it's going to undo the filter and you won't see it as I'm transforming it. And I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and make it bigger and then hit enter and you might say that there's you know there's something wrong why is it why is it looking so blocky let me turn off my glow for a second why does it look so blocky and awful well remember what i said smart objects retain the original quality of the image and now because this was created in photoshop this basking in the sun image is limited by its resolution so let's go ahead and edit the contents of this. I'm going to right click and edit the contents. And I'm going to click OK here. And notice it just opened up another window in Photoshop. Well, these are T layers, which they should be vector, right? But the problem is my size isn't very big. See, this says 100%. This document is not very big. And even a vector uh, ty type layer does not look very big if this, or very good if the file size is very tiny. So let's see if we can do this. Let's go to image, image size. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. I'm going to put it up to 300 pixels per inch. This is going to make it a lot bigger. So now it's 2100 pixels across. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And you see now that looks a lot better. Much clearer, right? Much clearer. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to say yes, save it. And now when I go in here, you'll see that now it has been updated and my edge is clear. Now that only worked because my type layer in Basking in the Sun was already high quality. 
Let's make some other changes. Let's right click on this and edit contents again. And this time I'm going to add some effects. Maybe go in here and add a grading overlay. And we'll make this grading overlay be in color dodge. Yeah. And let's see, let's also do a drop shadow. And we'll extend that out a little bit. Okay. And then, you know what? I like that. Let's uh, copy it and we'll paste it onto basking. So we'll paste that layer style as well. And then, you know, yeah, I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save it by clicking the X. And we'll say, yes, save. And now, see, now that's starting to look much better. So now you have basking in the sun showing up. I do want to tell you about one other way you can get a uh, smart object into here is you can do file and place and if you've loaded the shortcut keys it'll be alt shift control D and that will um, load that in and allow you to place a document so that's the same way as just dragging it into the document. Uh, yeah, so in the end, I think we made a pretty good change to this, and everything still looks great. So check to see. If you have a smart object that doesn't look right, go inside and edit its contents and see, is your document tiny? I mean, like I said, mine was the default Photoshop size, so it was only like 500 pixels. So anyway, this is what I want you to make. See if you can make some changes and make your own version of basking in the sun with a sun shape from Illustrator. And that's it for this video.